So what actually is Lumilor? How is it made? And how long does it last? Hi, I'm Pete from Pamelite, and this is Lumilor A to Z. So Lumilor is an electroluminescent coating system that when you put an alternating current to it, it produces light. But what does this actually mean? So electroluminescence is about a 40, 50 year old technology that used to be used in old gauges or thermostats that you see on your wall for your heater with the little green screen. Um, and also Goodyear actually tried to produce what looked like electroluminescent tires back in the 60s. Um, basically what they did was they put 18 light bulbs inside of the tire to give it the appearance of electroluminescence. Um, the only problem with it back 40, 50 years ago is that it was very dim. Uh, you really couldn't control it, uh, the brightness, um, the color, anything like that. Um, and you could pretty much only get the green color um, 40, 50 years ago. And you can only produce a small area on tiny little films. So um, to kind of break it back a little bit, there are different types of luminescence out there. There is photoluminescence, which is charged by sunlight, black light, what have you, to then give off its luminescence. Um, there's bioluminescence, where um, you have bacteria life in the ocean, or you have fireflies that actually produce a luminescence as well. Um, and you get into thermal, which is, you got it, generated by heat. So heat can also produce light as well. So that's called thermal luminescence. But we're gonna break down into electroluminescence. So electroluminescence is basically two electrodes that sandwich a dielectric and a phosphor layer. And when you put an alternating current through the system and it passes through the dielectric and through the phosphor, and only when it exits the phosphor, it produces a photon that we see as light. So we're cre actually creating an optical phenomenon with electroluminescence. Um, one thing that Lumilor has actually done though is taken those layers, the electrodes, the dielectric, and the phosphor, and actually turned those into a liquid paint form. And what this means is that we are now capable of applying this, each material, as large of an area as we want. Um, doesn't matter the size, anything like that versus right now, basically uh, you're only limited to, let's say if you're gonna print electroluminescence, you're only limited to as wide as a printer is. Um, and also when you get into tapes and ropes and other types of electroluminescence, um, you're still limited to the pre-produced, manufactured length of the rope or the width of the tape. Um, so at that point, you're still very limited to what the things you can do with the electroluminescence. Um, and that's why Lumilor itself, by turning each one of those layers into a paint form, we can then apply that onto any substrate, any surface, as big as we want uh, to then produce light and give off an electroluminescence. Um, but each one of these layers that has been created is basically what we talked about before. If you remember our stack, we have two electrodes, which is on the bottom and the top, we have a dielectric that is sandwiched and a phosphor that is sandwiched. So the very bottom electrode that we're going to be applying um, onto any substrate is the back plane. This is gonna be our bottom electrode. This is responsible for um, bringing the current in and actually um, the area that is actually being lit up is going to be where the back plane area actually exists. So, <clears throat> <clears throat> backplane itself. Um, this is a highly conductive, low resistance material. Um, and what that means is, you know, just think about highly conductive materials. There's, you know, gold, silver, um, copper, you have nickel, carbon. So a conductive um, material that is um, a, of low resistance. Um, basically, this material here is a copper material and once you get into it and you open it up and you take a look at it you do see and understand that this is actually a copper material so this is our bottom electrode which is the back plane and then you have what is sandwiched this is our insulation which is the dielectric 
um, this insulation is actually responsible for um, distributing the current throughout the entire system um, while giving it proper insulation. So we want to make sure that when we apply this stuff, this is actually applied properly throughout the entire lit area that we want. Um, and then we have what is also sandwiched that is responsible for producing the light is the uh, lumicolor, which is a phosphor. And as I mentioned before, as an alternating current passes through the system and it passes through the phosphor, it exits the phosphor and we see a, a photon um, that we see as light. So <clears throat> this is also what's sandwiched in between. And our top electrode, which is our conductive top coat, this is more of a translucent type of um, electrode. So where this was a highly conductive, low resistance material, this is a highly conductive, highly resistive material. So what that means is that we would have to bring the resistance down in this material, which we then use the back plane to add a bus bar, but we can get into all that stuff in a later video. We're just kind of going down the basic breakdown of the materials themselves. The Lumilor electroluminescent coating system lasts about 50,000 hours. Yes, 50,000 hours of lit life, meaning only whenever it's on does that life start to degrade a little bit. Now, 50,000 hours, let's think about that. 50,000 hours would be about 5.7 years of it being on, constantly on, never turned off from start to finish, constantly on. That's how long Lumilor lasts, is about 50,000 hours. Now, when it hits the end of that 50,000 hours, it doesn't just turn off and that's it, no. What happens is, once it starts to get to that 50,000 hour mark, the system starts to degrade ever so slightly in brightness. So, the Lumilor itself will hit what's called a half-life at that 50,000 hours, meaning yes, half its life it will it be at that 50,000 hours. So um, once you get to about 35.7 years light, um, you're going to start to see a slight degrade in the light brightness ever so slightly. You really can't see it with the, the naked eye because it doesn't just click off like a light bulb or something. It slowly degrades over time. But what we can do if you ever get to that point and you do hit the 5.7 you know years of lit life um, since the electroluminescence in the lumilor is frequency and voltage dependent meaning the more voltage or less voltage you pump into it or take away from it it's either going to get brighter or dimmer now the frequency itself actually changes the hue of the actual colors so you can get maybe a light blue to a darkish blue and kind of get a white in there and change it, but that's what the frequency does. Um, so basically, after about 50,000 hours of lit life, you could actually raise the voltage back up a little bit more. So say you started with 12 volts, hit your 50,000 hours, probably go to 16 volts, and that would be, bring it right back up to the same brightness it was before. Now, after that point, it's gonna hit what's called another half-life. But if you raise the voltage, then you have to remember that your 50,000 hours is now um, broken down less and less and less because you're putting more voltage into the same system, therefore taking away its lit life. So every 50,000 hours, you can probably go through and raise the voltage a little bit to bring the brightness back up. But I really don't think that we can get to that point of 5.7 years. Custom vehicle, fully lit right now. Maybe if Lumilor can be turned into a consumer product, maybe a night light or something that someone can use and it's plugged into the wall and it stays lit all the time, then sure, you can probably hit that. But once again, you can raise the voltage and bring the brightness back up. So electroluminescence in Lumilor in general technically really never burns out. It just keeps hitting half-lifes every 5.7 years. But also what we need to understand is that the Lumilor itself, since it's created over a plane and it doesn't have a pinpoint source of light, kind of like an LED where it's a pinpoint source of light, um, since the Lumilor is actually applied over a surface and it um, has a wider span of area to give off light, 
it basically floods the area with light not a pinpoint but it floods so what this means is if you're in fog or smoke and you have a flashlight or an LED and you try to shine it that light is going to kind of blur everything out and get reflected back to you because it's a single solid pinpoint of light that's hitting the fog and smoke and being reflected back. In Lumilor and electroluminescence since it's produced, the light is produced over a plane, it floods the area, meaning it floods the smoke and fog, and it can cut through and penetrate the, sm the smoke and the fog because it's not being reflected back. All of the energy in the light is not being concentrated on one area and then being reflected back. It's actually flooding the area. So the Lumilor and electroluminescence can actually cut through fog and smoke for safety purposes. I mean, if you were to paint a doorway in green and only whenever a fire happened and there was smoke, you'd still be able to see a green fog over there and know where the door's at because it does cut through it versus an LED be reflected back and you wouldn't ever be able to see where that light is coming from. But uh, another advantage of the Lumilor system is the fact that uh, it can be seen from miles away. Um, and the closer you get, it doesn't get any brighter so it doesn't blind you. So just imagine um, a road sign that has uh, LEDs on it to let you know where you need to go or what exit, what the next exit is. Um, as you get closer to that sign, the LEDs get brighter and brighter and brighter, start blinding you because what's happening is there's basically a pinpo uh, uh, pinpoint diode of light that's actually going straight at you and you can see and blind you from that pinpoint uh, versus electroluminescence floods the area. So, and it also works off of a frequency. So whenever you're traveling along and the same sign is very far away, and as you get closer and closer to it, it will not get brighter and brighter because all you're looking at is a frequency that is controlled by a voltage. Um, will, and it will not get brighter unless you raise the voltage within that system. So that's a very good um, use case for it is basically uh, street signs or any type of lights that could blind someone um, in basically a, a, um, a darker environment and having the electroluminescence doesn't give you that same effect as blinding LEDs because it basically floods the area. So I hope you found this video to be very useful on understanding the Lumilor product and electroluminescence at a base form, how it's made, and basically how long it lasts. We're going to be having plenty more videos coming out here pretty soon on the Lumilor product in our Lumilor A to Z videos. So please comment, like, and share. And as always, we'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching.